we all know the poor time management and reduced productivity have a great impact on us individually and this multiplied by number of people in your organization calls for a bad project management hi all this is tanishka from edureka and i welcome you all to the session on pod versus cpm today i'm here with two amazing methodologies to overcome time management and productivity problems which are pod and cpm but before we get started make sure you subscribe to the edureka's youtube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss any updates also if you are interested in pmp certification and training from edureka please check the link given below in the description let us start by understanding the meaning of pod and cpm by having a look on to their definition pod also known as program evolution review technique is a project management approach that involves planning, scheduling, organizing, coordinating and controlling unpredictable tasks. It is a network model that is used to calculate the amount of time it will take to realistically finish a project. So if you could see in this diagram, this diagram depicts the PERT network diagram. So it looks like a network as it contains of nodes and arrows. So if you look here, the circular node depicts the events or the milestones so these events generally are numbered so that ending node of an activity is higher than the beginning node all the activities are represented using arrows in the network it shows that all the arrows start as well as terminate at a node which represents the stage of completion of a certain event in the project timeline the numbers on the arc represent the time unit such as it can be under weeks or under months required to complete the project. So let's quickly understand in detail with an example. So let's consider that if there's a project such as house construction project. So you have different activity, like you have different activities to run, like name it as uh, prepare the house plan, then you construct the house, then you fix doors and windows into the house and then writing like wire the house and then you paint the house and then you polish the doors and the windows. So how would you create this? So these are the activities you know about. Now, how do you create a network within them is like first you create the events. So let's consider this is one event and this is second event. So what is an event basically? It is a specific instant of time which makes the start or the end of an activity. So here event 10 is the starting event and 20 is the ending event. And within this, we give a time interval of around one week and here the activity. So as we said, the first activity can be prepare the house plan. So within this one week, your preparation of house plan should be completed then only it would be said key that the first event is completed and it moves on to the second event. Then how do we connect the next process is like the starting event would be 20 and the finish event would be 30. And here the activity B is nothing but construction of the house. So we give the time duration of two weeks. So this is how you continue growing the network and you've reached the end. So here, when we reach the end, it reaches to 50. So as we said here, the events are numbered so that the ending node of the activity is always higher than the beginning node. So as you can see here, it is 50 and it is higher than 10. So this is how we work. And PERT is a probabilistic model. So whatever time duration we decide is by taking out the probability. So this was all about PERT. So in PERT, what do we do is first like we identify the specific events and stages, then we determine the proper sequence of the activities and then we construct the network diagram. Later, what do we do? According to the probability, we estimate the time required for each activity. And lastly, we determine the critical path and update the PERT chart as the project progress. PERT is an event oriented and appropriate for non repetitive nature of jobs. Why? Why are they oriented in such a way? We'll understand that ahead. 
On the other hand, CPM is a statistical project management approach that involves planning, scheduling, organizing, coordinating, and control of well-defined tasks. It is a network model that identifies tasks that are necessary for project completion and determine scheduling flexibilities. It is easy to understand and use as CPM does not consider time variation that can have a great impact on the completion of time of a complex project. So if we look on to this diagram here, CPM models the activity and events of the project as network. So here activities are depicted as nodes on the network and the events that signify the beginning and ending of the activities are depicted by arcs and lines between the nodes. So we'll take the same example that is house construction plan. So activity A was preparing house plan then the node determined with the sum of the time duration that is mostly a week as you can see over here. Then later we go to the different activity that is construction of the house. So same as we go with other activities and so on and we determine the time. So CPM is a deterministic model. So it is like determined to particular activities and it starts and finish within the given time. So in CPM, what do we do is like first we specify the individual activities, then determine the sequence of those activities and draw the network diagram. And after that, we estimate the completion time of for each activity and find the critical path that is the longest path through the network. And then we lastly update the CPM diagram as a project progress. CPM is active oriented and appropriate for repetitive natures of job. Now let's compare the two in terms of models. Here, BERT uses a probabilistic model. That is, it takes into account the uncertainties involved in the estimation of time of a job or an activity. It uses three estimates of the activity time that is optimistic, pessimistic or most likely. Whereas CPM is a deterministic model that is it does not take into account the uncertainties involved in the estimation of time for execution of a job or an activity. Next is time estimation. BERT is appropriate for high precision time estimation because duration estimates range from best case to worst case and assume that these estimates are accurate. The weighted average is used to calculate the time estimate for each task. This method ensures that the probability of the time duration of each task taking more time than the estimated time has been minimized. As CPM is a deterministic model that does not take into account of variations in the completion time. So only the number is used for an activity time estimate. Hence the CPM is appropriate for reasonable time estimation as here cost is more important. In terms of orientation, BERT is event oriented rather than being activity oriented, which means that a network is constructed on the basis of events. An event is a specific instant of time which makes the start or the end of an activity. In BERT, the emphasis is focused on the start and the completion of the event rather than on the activities. The activities taking place between the events are not specified. For example, at a foundation construction project, the various events happen like foundation layout started, foundation excavated, sideboard fixed, concretion completed, etc. On the other hand, CPM is more activity oriented rather than event oriented as activities are usually operations that take time to carry out and on which the resources are an expense. The activities are connected in logical sequence. So the time allotted to the each activity is related to the cost. So here, as we said, cost has the higher priority. For example, we'll take a same example that is a foundation construction project. Here, the various activities can be layout foundation trench, excavate the foundation, put sidebars, concrete the foundation base, etc. So these count into activities, which has a proper fixed time. Later we have focus. So here, BERT majorly focus on time as meeting time target to minimize the 
time required for the completion of the project. Whereas TPM majorly focuses on time cost trade off as here minimizing cost is more important. Going ahead, crashing. Crashing is the technique for shortening the project duration by reducing time of one or more critical activities to less than their normal time. So here, the concept of crashing is not applicable to PERT because there is no certainty in time, making it hard to alter the activity duration. Whereas CPM as it is the method of time cost trade, it is concerned with how much to crash each of the activities to anticipated duration of the project down to desired value. The data necessary for determining how much to crash a particular activity is given by the time cost trade graph for an activity. Next is dummy activity. So what is dummy activity? A dummy activity is a type of operation in a project network which neither requires any time nor any resource. It is intended to show a path of action in a project activity diagram and is employed when a logical relationship between two activities cannot be linked by showing the use of arrows linking one activity to another to maintain the logic of network diagram. In this case, the dummy activity does not consume the time duration whereas PERT focuses on high precision time and activities are not specified. Hence, PERT doesn't use any dummy activity. Whereas dummy activities are used in case of absolute necessity so as to maintain the logic of the network diagram. Therefore, CPM uses dummy activities to maintain the logic in the net. And lastly, if you look on to the application, then as PERT deals with unpredictable activities, PERT is used where the nature of the job is non-repetitive. As per technique is evolved with the project which are require research and development. As it starts from understanding all tasks required for the project to complete and how much time it would take for each activity to complete. Whereas CPM involves the job of repetitive nature as here activities occur repetitively. And it is evolved for constructive projects or non-research projects as it is a popular scheduling technique in the construction industry due to its simplicity and effectiveness. So these were the key differences between PERT and CPM. I hope you enjoyed the session and got to know the major differences between PERT and CPM. That's all from my end. Happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!